How to make a resume in Canva for beginners. Hey guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today I will be showing you how you can create your resume using Canva. So let's get into it. Now, building a resume is a very important part whenever you are looking for a job or looking for any kind of employment, and it's very essential to have a good resume at hand. But this can be very difficult to build and it can be a little confusing as well. So not only am I going to go through step by step how you can build it on Canva, but also some of the integral parts that are necessary for any kind of resume. So let's get into it. Now, the first thing I'm going to go over with you guys is actually this. So some of the essential things that you need to have in a resume, because a lot of people are a bit confused on how they are supposed to build their resume. A lot of people add some information that might be considered unnecessary. Some people add information in the wrong order. So some of these things are essential and some of these things are optional or dependent on the type of job that you're applying to. So first off, the four basic things you need to have are your name, so you have your name, your contact info, your experience, and then your education. These are all essential things that you need to include in your resume. Your resume could be for a marketing job, a engineering job, a biotech job, whatever it might be, you have to include these in your resume. Now, other things like your skills, certifications, previous work roles, unrelated education or experience that you might have that you may or may not want to include in your resume. This depends on what kind of resume they are requiring, what kind of resume, what kind of position is it. If it's a very open position like a marketing position, you might be able to add some more uh, education or some more educational certifications. But if it's a very specific uh, job application that you're applying for in a specific research lab for uh, physics, then you might not want to include some random certification or random unrelated educational experiences. Now, moving on to the different styles of resumes. Now, going on to Canva, I have just logged on to my account. I'm using a free account to show you guys how you can do this for free. So just search for resume in the template section and you will find multiple different templates. Now, what I'm going to go through with you guys is first off, if you are building a very academic field resume, so if your field is academic, then you might want to go with a template that is very academic. So a template like this one, which is minimalist, it has all the basic information. It's, you know, uh, not excessive. It doesn't have too many design elements to it. It's a very sober kind of resume. This is what I recommend for every academic field. If you're not in academia, then you can have more creative liberty with including your picture including you know a bit more of a design element but if you are in academic fields strictly stay with a very minimalist design uh, resume it's very essential simply because they don't like excessive designing and resumes they're trying to filter out for relevant educational experiences or relevant information they don't want to go through different designs to access that information now moving on to if you have a more of a creative liberty for your resume then you can go with a resume like this. But depending on the agency you might be applying to, you might not want to include your photo. Now, the reason for this is some people have some, you know, very professionals recommend not including your photo in your resume. The reason for this is, is that it builds up a curiosity for when you actually arrive at your interview. Secondly, you could be profiled in multiple different ways via your image. You also can, uh, you know, be misjudged by a simple image. So it was recommended by most professionals that you don't include an image, but if it actually requires, some resumes might even ask you to have an image attached of you as well. So for that, you can enter your image as well. Now, we are going to be building a sample resume for a academic field. So for a sample resume in an academic field, I would recommend something like this or a very minimalist template like I shared with you guys previously. So I'm just going to open up this minimalistic template. Now, it's very basic. It's very simple. And you want to keep it that way because if you make it more complicated, it really ruins your chances in your specific field. Now, once I have opened this up, you are going to see all the information that is pre-written. Now, first off, you have a professional summary and your core competencies in this template. What I like to do is I like to reduce these depending on what kind of uh, skill sets I want to display. Maybe reduce these and make this one section, so professional summary and core competencies with one specific section. 
and then move up my professional experiences and my relevant education and projects. So that can be a little more helpful. Now, before you start compiling or building on Canva, what I recommend you guys do is you open up your notes section, you open up a new note, and like the previous note, which I showed you guys, you start writing down all of these categories. So your education, your roles or core competencies or core skills, then your professional experience, your job experience, you could say, or professional experience, however you want to word it. It's the same thing and it really doesn't matter if you're using a fancy word for it or not. After that, you also want to add your previous experiences for relevant projects and your um, if you have specific certifications, you can also include those as well. Now, moving on, let's change this for a biotech CV. So I'm going to change this. So a biotech researcher. After that, you have your address, your phone number and your email address. Now, if you're not comfortable with adding your address, which I would not recommend for most resumes, you're going to actually remove that and just enter your email and your phone number. Some people might not even want to add their phone number, which is understandable because you might want to send out your resume to a bunch of different places and you can just include your email. But it's fine if you want to add your phone number as well, like so. Now, after that, I'm just going to take all these sections, move these up a little because I removed some of the sections from the top. Now, after that, I have my professional summary. If you feel like you want to put your core competencies at the start, you can choose to do this or compile them together. I'm just going to move this over here or just remove the sectioning and I can just enter this like so. I'm just restructuring this a little and I can start adding my professional summary. So like so you can restructure your professional summary, you can add you know more lines obviously and then you can change it to basic competencies include, you can just enter the sentence and then enter your skills one by one. Make sure these are accurate and you know you're actually reflecting these skills because you, whatever you put in these sections is going to reflect greatly upon you. So whatever you're going to put specifically in your competencies, you're going to be asked questions about that in your interview. So make sure you have some good competencies written. If you feel like, hey, I don't really have any kind of, you know, previous experience or I am not really, you know, someone that has worked a lot in the past. I'm someone that's like a fresh graduate or if you just got out of high school. In your basic competencies, you can enter any kind of games that you played in high school or any kind of activities that you have participated in. So you can include strong leadership, you can include team working, you can include uh, things like sense of responsibility, urgency, so on and so forth. You can include those qualities in your competencies or your skill set. Now, after that, you have your experience. This is going to be laid out pretty much as it is. So you have your company names if you want to uh, break them down in terms of company names. But there is one thing to always keep in mind. Always, always, always put the most recent experience on the top. Never, ever put the past experience first and the present one below that. Make sure whatever you completed most recently you put that first and then after that you include your older experiences because they are looking for what you are uh, recently doing not what you were doing you know when you were in high school plus if you have a university degree you don't need to mention your high school in your resume if you are just graduated from high school you don't need to mention that you graduated from middle school in your resume so on and so forth just add the most relevant and recent uh, educational experience you might have and professional experience you also had. In terms of professional experience, you can also add any other um, experience in the past that might be far back uh, before uh, you, you know, did something else in between. So don't include the in between and just only include the relevant experiences. Then you have some relevant projects and your education. So in this way, you can have a super amazing looking uh, professional resume using Canva. I hope you guys found this video helpful. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And I will catch you guys in the next video.